Hello everyone, it's Gary here from Echidna. Welcome to our, what is becoming our regular Wednesday afternoon Facebook Live. Um, I'm having lots of fun doing this, so welcome if you've just tuned in. Uh, it's uh, it's gonna be a fun little day. Not, not a real long one today, not like last week, we kind of went a, oh, well over an hour and a bit, I think. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about glow in the dark thread. Now, um, and the reason I brought this up today is because we have had a couple of questions previously this week about the thread, and then I thought, well, Halloween is not too far away and seems to be a really logical thing to use around Halloween time. So, so yeah, that's, that's the plan today. Talk about glow in the dark thread. I'm going to show you some fantastic samples. I'm going to give you some tips on how to use that thread, little tips to make sure it stitches well on your machine. It is a little bit different to your normal thread, so we'll cover off on that. And we'll talk about a couple of little fun tools that you can um, you can use alongside the glow in the dark thread. There's a good chance that many of you already have some glow in the dark thread, but there's, it's almost certain that you have all um, seen things that glow in the dark, uh, be that at clubs or, or whatever. You've seen neon lights and and um, black fluorescent tubes. You know, sometimes you go into a club and you know, if you're wearing a white shirt, it glows like crazy. Um, but then when you walk out of the club, it stops glowing. So there's a big difference between that and a glow in the dark thread. So again, like always, please, if you have any questions at all, um, just fire them away on Facebook there. I've, uh, I've got one of my helpers here, Brittany, is actually sitting in the corner on the computer ready to fire any questions at me. And uh, no doubt uh, we'll be able to answer heaps if, if you have them. But if you don't ask them, you'll never know. So uh, don't be scared. And it doesn't matter how insignificant you think the question is. It's probably an important one. So let's get into, first of all, a little bit of an explanation of what actually makes glow in the dark thread. Um, anything that glows in the dark, it's essentially a what they call a photoluminescence process. And uh, I'm not going to get into the science of it because it is really quite tricky. But it's interesting to know that the glow in the dark thread, which I have on my on my right here, which is our Echidna soft light uh, glow in the dark thread, is very different to these Hemingworth threads, which are the neon or fluorescent threads. And when we turn our fancy little light on, you'll see you'll see what I mean. But essentially, the glow in the dark thread, which we have in uh, a couple of configurations. So we have a little pack of um, six shades here, and these are I think they were 140 meters per spool, and they're a slightly heavier thread than your normal embroidery threads. So they're equivalent to around about a 35 weight. Thread. So a little bit heavier than your standard 40 weight embroidery thread. So we have them in the, the six pack here of um, six different colors. We also have them in an 800 meter spool, which is obviously the more efficient way to buy them. And as I said, the product is a little bit heavier than a standard embroidery thread. So first of all, before we dig into looking at all the fancy samples and where you might use this type of thing, let's talk about using different types of threads or, or um, uh, different embroidery threads when you when you are embroidering because it's a little heavier the general recommendation is that you would use a bigger needle now pretty much every embroidery machine on the market will will generally run as a standard size a 75 a size 75 slash 11 needle which is uh, which is really 95 percent of everything you then can use also get larger needles uh, typically you'll get a size 90 14 so 90 being the metric number 14 being the old singer scale um, I recommend going to a slightly bigger needle for the glow in the dark thread because it is a slightly heavier thread. And um, if you use a size 90 embroidery needle, that's fantastic. And I would point out also, we, we do have a, a special needle that uh, our wonderful people at TNC make. And it's an embroidery needle, a size 90 slash 14, but it's an even slightly bigger eye again. So it just it just harbors the thread a little bit better and does make it a wee bit easier to use these heavy threads. And while I'm talking about that, another, um, another thing to, to, that's worth talking about when it comes to needles is if you're using a metallic thread, I also recommend using an embroidery needle. I'm not a fan of metallic needles, so use an embroidery needle. And I've got a spool of my soft light metallic here. If you were using that, I would suggest trying a size 75 11. But if your machine's, you know, giving a little bit of grief at that, then go to a size 
14 or a 90 and that will definitely help. And then this other special tip needle, which is available on our website too, and I'm sure uh, one of our team will be able to put that information on Facebook for you, the, the link to that needle. They're a great needle for the for really difficult threads. And, and as always, when you've got a thread that's a little bit different to normal, it's a good idea to run your machine a wee bit slower. Um, and sometimes just backing off that needle tension just a little bit, just to allow the thread to, to flow through the machine a little bit easier. So, what do they do to the glow and dark thread to make it glow? Essentially, it is a just a, a polyester thread that is, for the want of a better term, impregnated with phosphors. Now, phosphors are little particles that absorb energy, and that's how glow in the dark thread works. It absorbs energy, and once it's absorbed that energy, it has to get rid of it. It has to let it go. And so, if the energy source is taken away, then it releases that energy in the form of light. So it actually emits light. And that's what you can see glowing. The next question that people ask is, how long will it glow for? Um, and I'm going to show you practically in a minute, but we're doing the science first. Um, it depends on the product, but typically you'll get some sort of glow or, ray or, or emission of light for anything up to several minutes, sometimes longer. It just depends on how much light or how much uh, energy that that thread absorbed while it was getting it. Now, contrast that to these fluorescent threads that I have here. And again, you'll see it when I show you under the different light conditions. These guys don't absorb energy. They reflect it, essentially. So when you hit the, uh, the, the neon threads or the fluorescent threads with um, energy, they, they look very bright. And that's what makes them look neon sort of colored. Um, but the minute you take that light source or that energy source away, they don't emit any light at all. And that's the key difference, which will be really apparent when I show you uh, in a few moments the, the samples we've got. Now, th what is the best type of light? Um, there's loads of different options there. The most efficient form of light, of course, is the sun. Now, that's not terribly practical if you're wanting to stitch something on a kitty's garment or something and uh, take it and, and then see the benefits of the glow-in-the-dark effect because you're not going to run out into the sun, then run back inside into a dark room. That doesn't really help anyone. So the sun kind of isn't that helpful when it comes to, when it comes to seeing the benefits of the thread. Um, plus, you kind of want to do these at night when it's really dark. And last I checked, the sun doesn't shine at night. Um, so what's the next best source of light? Well, any light will actually charge the particles. However, the best way to do it is with a little UV torch or a UV light. You know the black lights that we've, we, we see? So if I turn this on, I don't know if that shows up in the camera. Yeah, it doesn't really look. I'm looking at the wrong camera there. It's hard to see that it is actually a blue light, but it is in fact, and that is emitting a UV light spectrum. So UV light is absorbed very, very quickly and efficiently by the particles in the thread, and then it re-emits it. Now, of course, the lights are on at the moment, so nothing's gonna, gonna really happen. So it just so happens that this little torch, uh, we actually import these and we do sell them. Um, I think they're $9.95. So bear that in mind when we get into talking about what you might be able to do with the UV threads. So this is a great little source of, of um, exciting the, the, the particles in the thread to make sure that they're glowing. And I guess then it, it, it leads to the question, what's the typical application that you might use glow in the dark threads for? Well, to be perfectly honest, the most common application is doing fun things for kids. Um, creating uh, garments with some glow-in-the-dark thread on it, um, wall hangings, features, parties, all sorts of things. And uh, I just thought we had a question there, Britton. I just thought you put your arm up. Oh, we do have a question. We do have a question, yes. Um, Kim would like to know, do you use the same tension as normal embroidery? Um, you can try that. So the question was, do you use the same tension as normal embroidery? Just do a little test, so as you should do with any new type of thread you, you're about to use, and just see how it goes. If your machine copes well and is, is giving you a nice stitch at the tension you've got it at, that's fine. Leave it at that. But if you if it if it's looking like it's pulling the bobbin thread a bit, or it just doesn't look as neat and tidy as it should be, you might want to back the tension off on the needle. You know, just one or two points. Don't go too far, um, and just see how that actually travels. It it is really a very similar thread to embroidery thread. It's just slightly thicker than your standard 40 weight embroidery thread. So I hope that answers that question for you. Again, needle selection is really important. And also another important thing is if you put a heavier needle in your machine, um, remember you, you are going to, it's going to punch a bigger hole. 
And you want to make sure you choose designs that are suitable. You don't want designs that are really dense and bulky um, because you're already using a slightly bulkier thread. So design selection is really important. And again, when I show you under the, the blue lights we've got here, some of the designs we've used, it'll all make perfect sense for you. Um, so, so yeah, applications for this kids, kids stuff is just ideal. Now, uh, I know my two grandkids, uh, Parker and Peyton, they both have a UV blue torch. And right now they're collecting the little ushies, I think, from, from Woolworths. And uh, and of course, it's it's fun because they, they go to bed and they take their little UV torch and they shine at everything in the room and um, everything that is white lights up. But if you've got something that is a glow in the dark, it's really it's really fun. The kids love it. They're, they're six and they get a real kick out of it. And I've taken loads of our fabric samples home and the stitch samples and they have a ball with it. So it's a good way to send them off to bed, you know, because that can be a challenge sometimes. Um, and of course, uh, uh, glow in the dark parties or black is it black light parties yeah so, so Brittany of course if you don't know is my niece and she's been working here for six years now Brittany yeah and um and uh, I guess when uh, when our kids and and Brittany were all growing up that was a big thing having the the black light parties because what you can't see here right now is I have a couple of black lights sitting above me that I, I stole from home and uh it's going to look really cool when we turn that on I can assure you um so yeah that, I'm, am I right when you were young like black yeah. light parties they were kind I think of fun. they're still cool. I'd yeah. love to go to a black light uh, absolutely, party. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> we'll show you some little party tricks with a fluoro pen a little later as well, if you go and get a black light. Now, so these little, these little torches are handy. The other thing, now this is a little bit different to talking about thread. I, when I travel, don't, I don't want to freak anyone out with this. When I, when I travel, I always take a blue light or a UV torch with me. Um, I, and I've done a lot of traveling over the years, uh, particularly for, for work. And when I go into a hotel room, I'm honest, first thing I do is I shine this around and I check the room to see how clean it is. Because if it's not clean, if there's stuff that you don't want to necessarily be involved with sleeping in that room, it will show up with a blue light torch. Would, I would never travel without one. And I know that sounds really weird, but um, man, I've walked into some bad accommodations sometimes and... Uh, that's been a lifesaver. Anyway, that's enough of that. Uh, so let, let's, let's, I think we should have a look at some samples now and um, talk about it. And what I've got here, so just to explain what our setup is. I've got loads of samples that we've done over the years and we've used these at various shows we've done. And some of you may remember, oh, several years ago, we did a glow in the dark sort of walk through um, tunnel at one of the shows. We haven't done a show for a long time, so I've forgotten what they're called. Um, and it was awesome because you could walk into this sort of black tunnel and we had all these amazing stitch outs and the, the black lights were in there. And, uh, I think it opened a lot of people's eyes to what you could do with a, with a glow in the dark thread. So the, many of these samples are from that. And, uh, what you're going to see when I turn these lights on is really cool. I'm, I'm just going to flow through a few of them now. Uh, before I do though, I will just point out prices because I know that's probably going to get us on, on the thread. So the little six pack of thread here, which is like a nice little sample uh, range, is uh, retailed $39.95 um, and they're in stock. We also have the same six colours in the 800 meter spools and they are I believe $19.95 and the little UV torch is $9.95. Now, until I think the end of trade on Friday, we're going to do 20% off all these products. So they'll, that should be already almost ready to go on our website. So just give it, wait till the end of this um, video and you should be able to get those. So 20% off um, for those products if you're interested in playing with some glow in the dark thread. And the other point is you have to actually do it. So don't just buy it and not use it. Make sure you commit yourself to doing a project and um, using it. So I think it's time. Let's have a look. Now, you notice I'm wearing a um, fluorescent uh, safety vest. So this is a fluorescent vest. It doesn't absorb energy as much as it reflects it. So it kind of absorbs it, but reflects it immediately. And the minute the energy is taken away from this, it will stop glowing, um, unlike the threads. So I'm gonna get camera guy who has the switch for the main lights. We're going to turn them off. It's going to go dark, so don't panic. We're still here. And then I'm going to turn on my blue light. And when I turn that on, or black light, I guess that's the proper name. When I turn that on, you won't be able to see me very well, but everything else will be extraordinarily bright. So just going to run through some samples and keep talking to you as we're doing that. So lights off. 
all the lights off, we're in the dark. Now you can see now, I have my blue lights on, black lights, UV lights, cool. and these are fluorescent tubes, right? So, and, and you can buy these uh, at pretty much any electrical store, like the lighting store, um, and you can buy a fluorescent baton and, or, or um, uh, holder, and you can actually set these up in a, in a kid's room or a family room, a rumpus room or a garage, wherever you want to have a, a fun party for the kids or, or adults. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We can, you can still have a black light party if you're, if you're adults. Um, but now, can you see things glowing? Obviously, the vest I'm wearing is definitely reflecting. Uh, you can see here on my left, I've got the Hemingworth neon threads or the fluorescent threads. And here I've got, I'll turn that one around because that's the brightest one, those two. And on this side, we've got the glow in the dark threads. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch off the blue light or the black light and I and you're going to see something um, that you will expect to see and that is that the glow in the dark threads will still be relatively visible whereas these threads on my left the Hemingway threads will not so I'm just going to switch that off for a moment and can you see that we've lost pretty much everything the only thing is you can still see a bit of the glowing on the, uh, the threads there so we'll switch that back on and that's because these guys were absorbing a little bit of the, the energy that was coming from the black lights above us, absorbing it and then releasing it once the energy source is, uh, is gone. So let's start having a look at the typical use for a glow in the dark thread. And I'm going to pull up a couple of little samples here. And Halloween's the first thing that comes to mind. Now, Halloween is the end of October, right? That's right, isn't it? 30, yeah, I think it's the 31st. 31st of October. It's not a huge thing in Australia, but it is growing in popularity. Um, I, I guess this year, it, 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 I don't know there'll be too much trick-or-treating given all the, the current situations. But nonetheless, it's, it's, it's fun and it's, um, it is definitely getting more popular in Australia. So, I'm going to shoot to a different camera now. And if you can see that there, I'm going to move that out the way. And this is a, I think this is a John Deere design that we stitched. So it's just basically using glow in the dark thread that has been um, stitched onto just a black fabric. And I think this is actually a cushion cover. So that's kind of cool. Now, watch what happens if I turn off the light. It's still glowing. And it will glow for a few minutes and it'll eventually dissipate all the energy that it has stored and it won't glow anymore. And, um, and that's how the glow in the dark stuff works. Now, if I get another design here that has not had any, um, any light source on it. So before I turn it on, I'm going to pull this out. Now, you can't see anything there at the moment, can you? I hope you can't, because I can't. Maybe a little faint bit. Now, this is another sugar skull or um, yeah, candy skull. And I'm going to use my blue, uh, my UV torch now, and I'm going to charge it with some light. So here we go. You see that? That's using the little torch rather than the big lights that I had on just a moment ago. Now I'm just giving that a good bit of charge. And the more you give it, the better it will glow. Now I turn that off and it is now glowing. And it will stop glowing in due course once the energy dissipates. But that's the fun part of, uh, of glow in the dark. That's how it works. And if you were to use glow in the dark thread on a shirt and, um, or, or you, you could even use it in a logo, given the right circumstances, that, that, little, that thread would glow if it's charged with, the, with the energy and then, in a, and then put in a dark environment. Put that back on and we give it another charge. And that's all there is to it. And there you go. So that's, that's a, a classic example. I'm going to turn my blue light back on now and... Um, We'll just, and you'll see once I turn the, the black light on, see how, see how that really does stand out now. So this is some of the typical designs. Now don't ask me where all these designs came from because I don't know, to be honest. We, you know, um, there's so many great design companies out there now and you know, we sell lots of designs, but, but we sell a fraction of what's available globally. Um, one, of, one of my favorite sites is Urban Threads. I know we get a lot of designs uh, that we buy from them and use them in our samples. And uh, I love it. So um, here's a typical kind of a Halloween thing. You say witch like that. It's a bad thing. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So now notice these. We'll get this up the right way. These are not dense designs. They're uh, they're simple 
simple designs um, with minimal stitch counts. And here's another one of the uh, the sugar skulls. I love those guys. They they look so cool. It looks better in real life too, guys. To be honest, <laughs> yes, the camera can only pick up so much. So this is again all your um, uh, a lot of the Halloween type of things. I'll just get that lined up there. Simple design stitch outs, and you probably already got loads of designs that would do this. This is really impressive, this one here. Again, it looks more impressive in reality than it does uh, on the camera, I'm sure. Although Flynn has done, an, oops, I gave him his name away. Camera guy has done a great job at setting up our, our cameras here. Another one of these guys, they look fantastic. Now this is interesting because um, down around the, uh, the face, that's all glow in the dark thread but we haven't used um, all glow-in-the-dark thread on the hat. So if I shine that there, you might be able to see the, the pink thread is just normal thread and it just doesn't glow. It's still emitting or reflecting a bit of light, but it's not glowing, so it's not actually absorbing any energy. We have a question. We have Jared. a question, yes, Brittany. Helen has asked, what is the maximum time they'll stay lit? Um, look, I've found it, it's very intense. So, so if you hit it with UV light, it's very intense for the first, you know, 30, 40 seconds, one minute, and it will just slowly dissipate from there. There's a good chance you'll still see the glow, potentially up to five minutes, but it will lose that energy. And that's just the way anything that is in a glow in the dark type thing will work. Some, you might've seen the stars that you can stick on the ceilings in the kids' room. They do the same thing. You hit them with energy, they, they absorb the energy, and then they emit it as light. But within five minutes, usually they've kind of They've kind of uh, lost that that energy. Uh, a lot of watch faces. My watch face here, I don't even see it, but it's got the little um, bits on it. Uh, I find that holds energy, and, and I can see the little um, dials and everything for two or three minutes after it's been hit with some light, and then I've got to hit it with more light to um, to get it to work. So uh, that that's why we do like su suggesting if you're going to do this for kids and and just you know young ones who are wanting to have some fun with the stitch outs that we're doing, just Get a UV torch, honestly. And, and to be honest, a normal torch will work. It just doesn't work as effectively as a UV torch like these guys. And uh, at 10 bucks, they just, well, $8 if you get your discount, they just um, they just make the, the experience a lot more fun for the kids. So let's quickly go through a few more samples here. Uh, a few more uh, Halloween type things here. Um, now again, if we, uh, if we give that a good blast, and then turn our light off. And here's the thing, did you notice that the orange is kind of not really not really glowing? Um, there's two oranges. The, the orange, one of them is is really, really bright when you when you hit it with that energy. The other, and it doesn't doesn't emit a lot afterwards, but it's super bright. It's hard to see the orange here. Oh, you might be able to tell that there. Super bright when you hit it with the um, with the LED light. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if that was a normal thread, in fact, on that sample, because that looks like it. Here's one of my favorite samples. Um, now, this has not been hit with light yet. I'm going to put it down, and I'm going to show you a really interesting example. Now, this is like a, a willow tree, and I'm going to turn the blue light on, and I'll show you how, and I'm going to slide the light across the tree. I know you can't see it yet, but watch this. There you go. So that's me shining just a, an intense beam of light across the tree and notice only where the light hit it is it actually illuminated and that's how this thread works. It literally has little particles, phosphor particles in the thread that absorb the energy. Now let's do it again. I'll do another one down here. Way cool. And now if I hit the whole thing from a distance And there we go. That is, that's a lovely design. A really low stitch count, so it's not complex to stitch and uh, nice and easy, but it looks very, very effective. So love that one. Let's turn our blue light back on. Oh, and here's one of my... I keep calling it a blue light. I think... I, I, I've got to get the right terminology. I think it's a black light. Now, this is bright, right? So, uh, and what Halloween party wouldn't love to have? That guy. Now, again, he looks way better. In fact, if I just hold him up, I'll get uh, Flynn to... Yeah, that looks... That's actually a better shot, I think. You get to see the orange. Um, but
but he looks good under the black light and uh, probably not as effective as a, um, as a glow in the dark, but looks fantastic under black light. So as you can see, just some fun uh, Halloween type of things. Here's, an, here's another one, we'll just hold that up. And if I, uh, again, if I give it a shot of intense UV light, it will brighten up even more. Although my vest is now probably taking away from it. So there's a few Halloween things. Uh, we have a couple more yeah, questions. Yeah, please, Gary. more questions. Yes, love them. Uh, Debbie has asked, does it totally lose its ability to glow or charge with washing over time? I, it, it will, but the, here's the interesting thing, and I don't know how true this is. Um, most washing detergents actually have phosphors in them. And one of the theories I've, I, I understand to be true, I'm not a scientist, I, I can't vouch for the validity of it, but um, when you go into a, if you've ever been into a club with a, you know, black lights on and you're wearing white, uh, and it, some, some things glow way more than others, it's, it, I'm, I'm understanding that the phosphors in washing detergents actually basically stay in the fabrics to a certain extent and they, they, they then do the same thing. So, um, you know, repeated washing may actually sometimes enhance it. I don't know. Uh, all I do know is these samples are several years old now and um, not that we wash them, but I've got a couple of samples at home that the kids have got um, and, you know, they've been washed frequently and they still glow. So... Um, I've not come to a point where I've said that doesn't work anymore. Um, I, I don't have an exact answer, but once I, I suspect it is once the phosphors are gone in the thread, then there is no way for that thread to actually absorb energy and hence no way for it to emit light. But if the washing machine, the, the uh, washing powder thing is true, then often those phosphors are replaced just through the process of washing the, um, the apparel. So. Uh, I'd be curious if anyone's actually used it and it's, it's stopped working, please let us know. But I've never had anyone ring up and say, hey, the thread uh, doesn't emit any light. I've had people ring me and say, um, the thread doesn't work. Um, that's, and, and more often than not, it's because it's, that it's not been given any light source or any energy source. You have to give it an energy source. So I hope that answers the question. Yes. Um, and Beverly has asked, as a newbie to machine embroidery, yep. what sort of stitch count would be good for these projects when you say low to medium density? Okay, so density is probably the wrong word. Uh, let me pull up a couple more designs and I'll talk about this. Um, I'm going to get one that I think, this is a good example actually. This is a lovely design. Uh, so I'll pull that back this way a bit. It's, oops, it's actually a lantern and uh, it's, if you could see this, let me just see if I can, if you could see this in real time with me right now, you would notice that the, the filled areas are not actually filled at all. And this is a really interesting thing with embroidery. In the early days of embroidery, most designs were not, were not very filled. You know, they, you could actually see gaps between the stitches and um, they were very light stitch counts. These days, most designs are absolutely chock-a-block full of stitches. You can't see through the filled areas, and um, and that's okay. But the open designs of yesteryear, I think, actually look equally as good, if not better. And it's a case of that less is more effect. And this design is a great example. Um, I, I don't, I just can't get in close enough for you. But I can tell you now, looking at the fills, all the fills in those areas, I can see the fabric behind them. And it's all, it's like your eye fills in the gaps. Um, so there's no actual stitch count. For example, this design's quite big. It's, it would fit in a, would need a pretty big hoop to stitch it. So, but it's a very light stitch count. Having said that, th there might still be 20,000 stitches in it. If I took a design that was being stitched in a four by four hoop that had 20,000 stitches, that's gonna be a pretty intense design, a lot of stitches. Not a bad design, just it's, it's got a lot of stitches. So look for openness. Look for um, lots of run stitches rather than big filled areas because big filled areas actually do, they kind of just create, um, they just don't work as effectively. I guess it's hard to explain. Um, you, you've really got to, I'll try and do a whole article on that one day. I mean, that might be my best bet. <laughs> um, and where I can actually think about it, I'm not terribly on the spot. I mean, here's, a, let's, here's another good example. This, this stands out so effectively it's a teacup and a teapot. It's just a running stitch design. That's all it is. 
I think the stitches are, uh, they're a back stitch or a bean stitch, so they're a little bit thicker than a run stitch, but they, they, there's no fill in there at all virtually, and it's very effective. It looks, it looks incredible. And here's another one. I love these. These are great. These are like whimsical designs, um, a turtle and a, a dragonfly. And again, um, they look sensational, but there's no fill stitches. They're just running stitches. Here's another one. Again, uh, mostly running stitches. A little bit of fill around the tip of the wings, but even then it's not a solid fill. It's quite open and uh, just looks very effective. And this is a good example of where the, the stem of the, the flower or the stem of the, the tree has been stitched with normal thread. So it's only the luminescent or the, um, the phosphorescent thread or the, uh, the glow in the dark thread that is actually glowing. The rest of it is not. And that can be, give you some quite interesting effects. And this is a great use, uh, dream catchers. I know uh, my two grandkids in the, in the room they have at our place, uh, they've got a dream catcher hanging above the bed. And uh, <laughs> I've got to say, I haven't done it in glow in the dark thread yet, but I feel like I'm obligated to do that now. But uh, so dream catchers are fantastic. Here's another a good example of a low stitch count design, but with some, some fantastic effect. It's uh, just really, really low stitch count. But does that look effective or what? And that's quite a big design, but I would think there's probably less than two or 3,000 stitches in that design. But the effect is huge. And this guy is really impressive as well. Uh, the owl. Again, maybe from a distance on that one uh, camera guy. So, and we just give that a bit of a boost up there. I'm just giving it another little hit of... Oops. I'm going behind. There you go. So, so you can see that stands out and that owl looks really sensational. And yeah, another Gary, question. Kim has asked, would red work designs work the same way? Yes, they will. But red work designs are quite are typically only quite a fine stitch. So the, the run stitch designs that I was showing you were bean stitches or back stitches. So they're a little bit thicker than a standard run stitch. Um, You'd certainly see it, but it wouldn't have quite the impact as those slightly heavier stitches like the bean stitch or back stitches have. Uh, and here, here's a good example. This is, this is like a jellyfish. So again, it's all just run stitch, but I can tell you now it's a triple stitch, triple bean stitch, and it's a bit more, um, there's more substance to a standard red work. Satin stitches are good, um, always good. So this, this is a nice design. Um, let's have a look at that. So. These roses down the bottom, they're satin stitches and they look sensational. But again, you can't see it, but stitched in amongst the, um, the roses are very open, very, very open fill stitches in normal thread. So when you look at this design, in fact, we might just, can we switch the lights on camera guy just quickly? So this is a good example, I think. Okay, so... Oops, get my angle right here. So in around the, um, I don't know if we can get a close up. I don't think it's going to work, is it? No, no, it's, it's okay. In around the, uh, the roses, the fill stitching is really quite open. I can see straight through it. But that design right now, you wouldn't know that I've used glow in the dark thread. Um, hang on, I'm on the front camera, that's why. So, yeah. That, that's it. What about that camera? Does it, uh, is it, I'm just trying to get a close up here guys. So, uh, because I think this is really important. And we'll switch over in a moment if we can. So bear with us. We're still working out our Amazing technology here. Okay, that's that's better, I think. Yeah, yeah. So in, in around here, we've we've used glow in the dark thread on the satin stitches of the roses, but in behind the the roses and the the leaves, we've just used normal thread. So when there's no when you're not in the dark, it just looks like a great design. Um, but when you hit it with energy, go to the dark, the horse shines out, and as does the. Um, the satin stitches on the roses. And again, this is a really low stitch count design for the size of it. So it's very easy to stitch. That's the other thing. Um, 
a low stitch count design is far easier to stitch than a high stitch count design. You're going to get less puckering, less pull, uh, it's quicker, and honestly, it can sometimes look sometimes look amazingly better. So, um, oh, and here's here's the other one. This is a really good example of that practical type of stitch out. You might be able to see there, like these run stitches, these are in, in essence um, bean stitches or back stitches and uh, the, the fill is very open. Again, it's only the white outlining and the run stitches um, that have been done in the glow-in-the-dark thread and it, we can turn the lights back off now and you'll see this will, this will show up really beautifully. Here we go, we're coming, the lights going off. And we give that a, a good blast here. Now if you, if you set up, say you're doing a party, whatever party, adult, kids, doesn't matter, and you set up some of these black lights, black fluoro lights, and they're really cheap to do. Oh, and by the way, you can buy them as just screw-in bulbs too. So you can put them into any type of um, basic light fitting. I'm sure Bunnings sell them. Uh, most electrical wholesalers or retailers will, but you, you can have a stunning looking looking party. But have a look at that. Doesn't that look fantastic? It's a great effect. I love that design. Okay, now here's another really good example of what you can do. So I have stitched. Well, I haven't stitched. My my team have stitched. I don't get to do as much stitching as I would like to, but I've got just some black tulle here. And we've stitched all these fun little snowflakes in different uh, colors. And you can see it all just stands out. And you can make yards of this fabric and hang it around somewhere. And you really can't see the tulle of a nighttime. All you see is all these little stars look like they're floating in midair. This is a nice long piece. And if we go back to the front of house there with the camera, um, yeah, just I got meters and meters of this stuff, and uh, it looks great. And you could put little spiders on there or spider webs. And so when you're stitching on tulle, uh, we'll talk about that just quickly. Just sandwich the tulle between two layers of wash away, and uh, go stitch for your stitch till your heart's content. Then wash away all the the, the wash away, and you're left with this lovely th uh, glow in the dark piece of fabric that's got all these wonderful little bits on them and it's it's glowing so intensely here it is much much more intense here than it is um in fact here's here's an individual one it's a little snowflake if we go to our uh, that camera looks like it's just hanging in midair right but it's actually stitched on black tulle and so you can stitch anything that way you can stitch motifs all sorts of things now finally we'll just quickly show you a couple of other applications these are i think this is a john deere lace design and we've just stitched that on some black fabric if i turn the um, blue light off there it is shining away there's no light here now that's just it emitting the uh, the energy that it absorbed from the the black light turn that back on again christmas decorations can look really good in um, in glow in the dark thread. Here's some more. Just put your put your mind to it. I reckon if you went through all your design stashes that you have, you would find a load of designs that would 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 look awesome. This is a really lovely one. Again, I don't know where these designs, what company, but there's so many great design companies. Whoops, and I've just lost my monitor there, camera guy. That one's gone. So not quite sure where I'm looking now, um, but that's all right. I think we've run out of battery there or something. So anyway, am I on front screen or I'm on front screen? So there we go. We'll just keep going through a few of these, just more Christmas ones and another Christmas tree. Again, just hit it. If you've got one of these little UV torches, just hit it with some UV light. And it will shine till your heart's content. And I'm going to get my monitor back in a minute so I'll be able to see what I'm doing. There we go. So let's, uh, whoa. And again, if I turn the black light off, they'll just glow for a while. Look at this one. This is fantastic. 
again, uh, let it snow. That's a nice design. Now this one is a bit more vibrant than it looks because it's blue, yellow and white. And again, under the camera, it's hard to really get that, that genuine recognition. No other questions there, Brittany? No. Little snowflake designs. You get the general idea. You, but underlying all this, you have to use the thread, guys. So if you have, if you've got it, and I suspect most of you probably have, drag it out and uh, do some sewing with it because um, do some embroidery with it because it does look sensational and uh, just have some fun. No? Um, all right. No, I was going to show you the little party trick. Now, you might have already done this. So this is a uh, one of the just a normal fluorescent pen. And if I was to just put a little stripe, put my hand, I'll go back to the this uh, smaller camera there. There we go. So, oh gosh, that stuff's glowing. Let's move that out of the way. If I put a little stripe on my hand, you'll notice it glows really intently. And uh, you can have some fun. You can draw all over your face, over the kids' faces, over anyone's face, really. Whatever you draw, it will glow up. It will glow in, it, crazy in the, um, the blue light. The only thing I did find when I was testing this is it actually doesn't come off that easily. Um, so you've really got to... Uh, you've really got to make sure that you do scrub it to get it off. Otherwise you might find yourself in an embarrassing situation and you wouldn't want that. So that is a little bit of a rundown on glow in the dark thread. There is an article on our website um, about uh, making the most of glow in the dark thread. So you can, you can go and get that from there and it tells you all the things we've just put, talked about and uh, you'll be able to have loads of fun with it. So remember, uh, Use a, uh, an embroidery needle, um, preferably a size 90. Um, if you still feel it's a bit, doesn't sound right, or, or you're having any issues at all, grab some of these extra large eye embroidery needles. And, I, and I'll just point out, in fact, I think we can turn our lights back on. I think we're done with the, um, with the black lights now. We do now. have a question. Oh, we have a question, Sorry. fire away. Uh, Kim would like to know, would denim be okay to use with these threads? Absolutely, yeah, by all means. Denim's a great uh, choice. In fact, you can knock yourself out with a really cool denim jacket that you should wear to a nightclub. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. That's, if you wish. Uh, but look, any, any good fabric, any good applique, any fabric will do it. Like, I've, I've stitched on tulle. Um, so let me grab that little piece that we had. This will give you a bit of a better idea of what it is. It's, that's all it is. Just, you can see through it, see? I could wear it as a veil. Um, hey, wedding veils, that'd be great. You can have glow-in-the-dark wedding <laughs> glow in veils. Glow-in-the-dark wedding. Fantastic. A glow-in-the-dark glow wedding. wedding. Has anyone ever done that? I'm sure if we Google it, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it has been done. So uh, a whole glow-in-the-dark wedding dress. There you go. I'd love to see that. That'd that would be, be really cool. Um, so anyways, uh, any fabric you like, any application you like, just have fun with it. Embroidery is all about having fun and and just finding things that just you know uh, are outside the box and glow in the dark thread is one of those threads that you can do that with so you've got the um, that article on our website we talked about using the correct needles uh, make sure you thread your machine correctly these are mini spools of course uh, and and again I'm sure most of you don't do this but um, when actually I'll show this if we can have the small the, the short camera again thanks Flynn, sorry, I'm just going to show how this spool has a kind of a unique little clippy bit on the bottom. This is not a Hemingworth thread, so it doesn't have the cap system on there. Um, oh, we've got Brittany now. So there, there we go. So on, at the bottom of the spool, it pulls apart like that. And when you're not using it, the thread will wrap. You can just wrap it into there and close it again and that holds the thread and stops it from unraveling. I'll just get that in there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's, the thread is actually trapped in the base now and it won't come out. So, uh, it, but it's a mini spool. So please, when you use these, don't put them on a twin needle spool stand and let the thread come off at that angle. It doesn't work. Whoops. You can't pull this, you can't do it that way. It's got to come off the spool directly like that, either vertically or horizontally like that. But you can't do that. I hope that makes sense. 
and um, and just pop that back in the base and that will stop it unraveling. It's done. So that's that's a bit about the thread glow in the dark. A few ideas, a few great samples there. Uh, get yourself a UV torch and um, if you want to deck your stick, you know, deck your house out with some black lights and have some real fun with it. Any other questions? Uh, not at the moment, no. Not at the moment? Well, if you have any, just post them. We'll, we'll answer them throughout the course of the next few days, of course, or whenever. And uh, I hope you found that interesting and um, opened your eyes to some of the th fun things you can do. I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover. So on that note... we no answered all the questions. That's it? Yeah, we've all answered good. them all. And we did it in 45 minutes. Hallelujah. Well done. So thanks, guys, for watching. I have, I have fun all, all the time when we do this, and I hope you guys are too. Please uh, let us know if there's you know, other things you'd like to see us do. We're, we're compiling a big list and, um, and really enjoying the process. So happy embroidering. Have a great rest of the week, and we'll talk to you again soon. Cheers.